Hello, Stu from Black Rifle Model Works. So this is going to be the first part in some updates that I'm going to do for my submission for the Black Rifle Model Works D-Day group build. Uh, and for that group build, I'm going to be choosing this, the old Tamiya Bristol Bow Bowfighter TF Mark 10. Um, so just in, in way of a little disclaimer um, I'm reluctant to call this an unboxing video and I'm reluctant to call the future ones um, a build or call it a build series as such I'm not qualified to do a build series I am an aircraft guy I love World War 2 aircraft especially the old prop ones uh, but I haven't got really apart from uh, an airfix chipmunk I did <clears throat> last year I haven't really got any aircraft building experience so it's sort of just some updates of my uh, journey through it the pain I'm going through or the pleasure I'm getting out of it and, and j j really just a series of updates um, so uh, I'll do some other videos when I get to certain points such as you know uh, once I've done the cop pill got the halves together or getting it ready for a primer uh, and yeah, so we'll see how we get on with this. Now, uh, the reason I chose this is A, well firstly it qualifies for the D-Day group build, um, and mainly because uh, it's one of my favourite aircraft companies, and it's one of my favourite aircraft, probably my favourite aircraft of World War II, it was a beast of a plane. Uh, not really underrated, but probably underappreciated. It was used in many theatres, uh, in fact, all the theatres through, uh, through the war, Europe, uh, Pacific, um, especially. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just a great piece of kit. Great piece of kit. Um, I've, always had, I've always had a bit of a fondness for the Bristol Aircraft Company. A lot of my work... Um, well, spanning most of my working life really has been with the aerospace and defence companies around the Filton Aerodrome, uh, like BAE Systems, Rolls Royce Filton, Airbus, GK, and Aerospace. Uh, and when I travelled down there, I used to drive past the aerodrome every day. I used to love looking over, and uh, there used to be the Concorde there as well, parked on the side until they moved it in the museum. So. Uh, yeah, this is this is where the Bristol Aircraft Company was based, and it's also one of the oldest uh, aviation companies uh, from Britain. It was started in 1910 as the I think it was the uh, British and Colonial Aeroplane Company. How uh, British does that name sound? Uh, started by Sir George White. Was it George White? Yeah, I think it was. Um, he got involved in it. Uh, when he looked at the business potentials after having a conversation in France with Wilbur Wright. Um, they produced some pretty good aircraft during World War One, some of some good fighter and scout aircraft, and then they ended up buying a company called Cosmos Engineering in the interwar years and producing their own uh, engines. Um, and they sort of became an engineering powerhouse in the British avi uh, aviation industry. So yeah, I mean, I do. I, do, I just think this is an awesome aircraft, um, and it's it's an evolution really. It's probably the third generation of an aeroframe, but it's very similar to uh, the Beaufort. In fact, I've been looking at some plans on the Beaufort and the uh, and the Blenheim and and the way that it's evolved. Um, in fact, in fact, what we'll, we'll go take a look now, at, uh, what we're doing, and then after that, we'll pop down to the bench and we'll have a look at the kit itself. Okay, so I managed to get some plans of both the Beaufort and the Bowfighter, and just to show you the main differences really in the evolution from the Bowfighter to the, sorry, from the Beaufort to the Bowfighter. Um, yeah, so we've got the plans, and I managed to scale these up to the known dimensions on there. You always have to be a bit careful, especially getting plans off the internet, and they're usually of dubious provenance. Um, so once scaled up. Um, uh, I found the I found the Bowfighter one and scaled that up. Also, took them um, then struck some centre lines uh, around the main areas, such as the centre of the fuselage and the nasals and prop shaft, and laid them on top of each other. And, and we, we're there or thereabouts. There's only a couple of mil difference between the two, so I was quite pleased with 
uh, how they'd scaled up and uh, you can sort of see the differences between them and and, uh, and also the similarities um, the main difference being is the the starting off with the airframe um, it, as I say this is the this is the third generation really of the airframe from the Blenheim to the Beaufort and then the Beaufort to the uh, bow fighter um, but the, the, there were sort of some exterior changes but the, the the main structure of the airframe sort of remained the same and, and they did that because uh, they wanted to uh, keep as much of the original tooling and jigs from the Beaufort um, as possible so they can switch production to the bow fighter uh, pretty much you know with as little stress as possible um, the main difference has been is the bow fighter sorry the Beaufort had the Bristol Taurus engines uh, these produce about a thousand horsepower uh, in the base model um, but there were various um, upgrades to it as, as time went on uh, but the the bow fighter used the Hercules engine which was which was a lot bigger as you can see the Beaufort's in magenta and the bow fighters in the navy blue on this um, the Hercules engine was around about 15 horsepower originally but the power increased as the as the the aircraft evolved um, but noticeably the the engines were a lot larger um, from to back so they so the sort of stuck forward and as you can see this this bulldog stance of the of the bow fighter was not really by design but really the outcome of uh, um, sort of many engineering decisions going along the the, the, the process um, because it sat forward uh, it sort of shifted the center of gravity of the aircraft forward um, so they reduced the nose back to counter this and uh, also the, there wasn't a requirement for a bombardier in the front on the bow fighter so that's how it's got this sort of stubby nose uh, and the unconventional seating of the pilot sort of this far behind the twin engines um, another another fallout from this was because of the bigger engine on the Hercules um, it needed a bigger prop um, and to get the ground clearance they sort of had to mount the nasals mid-wing as opposed to the underslung arrangement on the on the Beaufort um, and I think that's pretty much it for the engines and as you can see the difference in the nose there the other major changes were the landing gear because of the night intended night fighter role of the bow fighter uh, uh, the uh, takeoff and landing on dubious airstrips and in the dark as well they went for the Lockheed landing uh, landing gear and the beefed up oleo struts and they increased the diameter of the wheel as well uh, and that's how it's sort of you know got this beefy bulldog look about it but you can also really see the similarities they also get the same transport joints in there so the various sections can be made in satellite factories around the country uh, yeah and these these are, these are the plans for some of the some of the different variants I'll be doing this one which is the TF uh, mark 10 which was the torpedo uh, it could carry the Mark, I think, Mark 12 torpedo, the British 18 inch. And if anybody out there's got any plans for one of these, I sort of want to model up and 3D print a better detailed one of these that, that's in the kit. Uh, and if you look here on the Mark II here, believe it or not, they made about 300 with the Merlin engines on there. I'll flash up some pics in a bit of it. And you would have thought these would have been, a, you know, uh, a pretty good aircraft with, with that choice of engine. These were the Merlin Mark 20s, I believe. Uh, they did intend to have the Griffin on there also. But it turned out that the 300 that were made performed pretty terribly. Uh, they were noisy um, because, uh, you know, it was a traditional poppet valve engine and the Merlins are noisy anyway, so it wasn't really useful as a night fighter for it, whereas the Hercules engine with the old sleeve valve types and relatively a lot quieter probably why the Japanese named this thing the, the, the whispering death um, 
Yeah, so the 300 made with the Merlin engines, approximately a third of these actually uh, were involved in accidents. I think there was a noticeable pull to the left on takeoff and landing, so uh, that version pretty much died a death. And you've got the different noses on here as well. This is a thimble nose. I uh, can't remember what radio in there. I'm sort of looking into this at the moment. I think this was the Mark IV uh, AI radio, uh, radar in there with a the herringbone aerial on the front. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, I love the look of the aircraft. It's, it's really nice. Um, got some other various plans just to double check and cross check cross reference between them again this is the tf mark 10 one thing i have noticed on the kit that um uh it, it's pretty much rivet free which is correct because this was uh, a stress skin arrangement with the large panels on there but it's missing the kit's missing some rivets round about if we have a look closely in here see these rivets for the um loading the belts in for the guns on these cover plates so we're gonna have to add those i think some rivets missing on these there is the rivets included around the uh top of the nasals um and i'm also looking into it now because i think yeah there's there's different air takes on the hercules engine one one was for a carbureted um engine the other was for the later supercharged ones uh, the bow fighter had the Mark 17 Hercules engine, and I think the early ones had the Mark 6, I'm not sure, um, and the Mark 17. Um, they uh, cropped the superchargers on there. There was a. It had a dual clutch plate, and they locked it into the M gear to give it better performance when wave running at lower altitude. Yeah, so you, so you can pretty much see it's very similar, exactly the same nasal centres same sort of wing root centers and uh, the the bow fighter's got this squat uh, squat look about it this one is showing the the uh, enlarged dorsal on the back which i probably won't do because i think it spoils the look of the aircraft anyway so yeah those are the differences okay so this is the kit itself look at that awesome awesome box art looks fantastic and his torpedo or the torbo roll as it was called nicknamed he had the rock bow and the torbo whether it had rockets or or the torpedo uh i think this kit is from around about 2000 2001 with the original molds originally uh, popped in 1997 i think it was um and that was for the mark six kit now I think it's exactly the same kit, so you could build a Mark VI out of this, um, but they give you the extra parts on a separate sprue, which we'll which we'll come to. Now I'm I'm not going to do a, a full review of it. It's a well known kit. Uh, detail looks pretty good. Um, nothing noteworthy there. This is the only bag I've opened so far because I wanted to check. And as we was looking in the CAD, this is the. Um, this is the scaled up bit. This is what I was on about with the rivets sort of missing from these gun ports here. And there's also some riveting missing from these top engine covers uh, in there. And there is a few little discrepancies which I'm not too bothered about. I don't know whether that's the fallout from using the Mark VI moulds or not. But these panels sort of fall short of these oil cooler inlets. But yeah, it looks... It looks, it looks um, Looks half decent actually, it's a nice bit of detail. Because this was uh, sort of stressed skin mainly, apart from the control surfaces were fabric covered. Um, <coughs> yep, yeah, looks like looking good. What have we got here? So, what have we got in this one? <coughs> Sort of radial engines lacking a bit of detail. We may have to do something there. Got a little pilot. Um, I don't know if I'll be having, you know, adding him. And we've got the nasals. They look of half decent, but it's going to be a right pain masking them because 
the collector ring is moulded on the front, whereas you'd have the main aircraft colour up to that point, and then we've got to paint these. I'm looking into these actually because typically modelers sort of paint these bright copper which I think looks so out of place. I'm not sure whether a lot of them were copper. I think most of them were stainless steel and I'm sort of looking into that at the minute. I know a lot of the uh, DAP, the Australian DAP built ones were stainless steel looking from the reference photos. And there's also a couple of joints missing off here which we can add, um, add to it. So yeah, I'm just looking into the... Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to source some plans or some notes on the collector on the engine collector rings on the front. So look, uh, wheels look all right, but we've got some aftermarket ones of them which we'll have a look at. That's, uh, I think that's the intake for the top of the engine. I wonder. Actually, they give yes, they give you the two choice: one for the carbureted engine, which was on the Mark Six, Mark Six, Mark Six engine. Um, sorry, Mark Six aircraft and these are for the supercharged engine i believe it could be the other way around i need to do a bit of homework there they look all right they look pretty good another gear bay doors got a huge propeller on that porcupine exhaust for the side of the aircraft um these look a bit rubbish to be honest with you but i've bought as i say i've bought some aftermarket which we'll have a look at what we've got next Clear parts and main fuse large. We'll open this up and have a look. Yeah, yeah we'll keep them safe. They look good so you can flip the uh, top hatch over if need be. And we've got the two variations of the, uh, uh, the radar operators down. Some various light covers on the front. Uh, I think this is for you get a choice of tailplanes on it. Which these, this is this is the additional parts spool, I believe. I've just dropped it over there. So that's for the enlarged dorsal on the back. Now this is what I was saying before. If anybody has got any plans for the British 18-inch Mark 12 torpedo, I can't find any. Well, I'm not having any success in looking for them anyway, and I just want to. I'll probably model one up. Because quite a bit of detail on them to be fair and this is sort of lacking um so yeah we'll see what we can do there i mean even if i mean to be fair i've got the overall length and the dimensions of the warhead and the flask section so um if i'll get some pretty good photos we can sort of place the hatches and uh you know fixings and rivets and whatnot but they look all right you've got the choice of the bombs as well um and I'm assuming I haven't seen them yet, whether they've got the RP3 rockets, which they used on them. Yeah, they are. Yeah. These are the British, they used to call these the 60 pound rockets. They were, their proper name was the RP3 rocket projectile three inch, because it had a three inch nominal bore um, burner tube on it. But yeah, these are corrupt. These are pretty good, pretty good panel marking. It is a bit of a basic kit really by, today's standard so we've got the herringbone radar on the front uh, antenna uh, i think that's the pilot sentry hatch uh, tail wheel uh, dash cockpit dash yeah this looks all right i'm really looking forward to doing it and you've got the choice of noses as well oh wait 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 a minute what's that one that's the standard nose which i'll be using you've got the thimble nose as well on a I think that may be the little blip that goes below the front of the windshield that they used on the Australian Mark 21 DAP produced ones. I don't know. I need to look into that. Uh, as I was saying, I've got some, I have got some extras. Oh shit, I've got a bit of a piece fell off there. Uh, we've got some aftermarket wheels. I really like these tyres. These are CMK and they're produced by Special Hobby. And these look really decent, weighted wheels. Um, so I think we'll be adding those. I bought the Edward Look um, sort of controlled uh, dash panel. And it's also got some seatbelt in there, but I'm not sure what I'll be. I'll definitely be using that, but I'm not sure about the seatbelt yet. Um, and I've also got some resin uh, porcupine exhausts. These are these look pretty decent actually. The only, uh, I mean, 
they're really good and it's actually got the bolts on the end which they do if you look at the um the the real aircraft but i don't know these are these are pretty good but i may model my own up and 3d print them with the uh, openings in the fins uh, plus this was an actual uh, stuck on end cap on the real one and that's not really showing on here but it's a shame really because they have got the bolts sticking through so i don't know I, I need to make a decision with that to be fair canopy masks must have really and i've also bought some various th these are the kit decals uh these are the tamiya ones but i shall uh, most probably uh cut the stencils uh, myself and and paint on the markings or well, some of them anyway at least i'll paint these ones on i might not be able to get away with that one because of the uh the white border around there i don't know we'll see how we go i have bought some aftermarket decals as well um which we'll go through got various ones here various schemes but we've obviously got to do the d-day scheme so i need to choose one of those uh i think i'll probably just get the aircraft together first and, the, and then and then make a decision on the markings afterwards i've also bought some backup ones as well i just i was a bit unsure at the time of which aircraft to do and whichever i don't use i should probably sell on um the other thing that i have bought or i have got in already is we've got the Ares resin wheel uh, gear bays in there. These look pretty decent. Um, and it's got the detailed of gear doors on there. So we'll use them. But I also did buy the interior set. And this looks a bit really complex. And if I'm honest with you, I'm pretty new to aircraft building. And if i start getting into this there's that much cutting and carving and hacking up to get this in i, I just don't want to uh you know let it suck my enthusiasm for the build out of it so i should probably keep that for a future one or sell it on or something like that. i'll leave it out for this one you're not going to see much of the interior of the cockpit anyway so um so yeah as I say, uh, quite a few decisions on things like markings to be made, a bit of research to be done on things like the radars and the intakes. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting on with it. And it does look a pretty decent kit, to be fair. So, so yeah, we'll see how we get on with it. Yeah, so it, 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 looks, a, it looks a half decent kit, to be fair. Um, as I said previously, um this isn't really a build series uh, i don't think i'll be teaching you anything uh really just a series of updates as uh, there's people far better qualified and better placed to uh give you tutorials than i am um especially over youtube and facebook and whatnot so yeah um so time will tell see how it goes together hopefully it'll be an enjoyable build i'm sure it will be uh and then uh we'll do some more videos and give you some updates so Thank you very much for watching.